So uh, my name is Mark Bernstein. I just wanted to, to welcome everyone here to uh, Danny's uh, Fest Schrift, uh, or Danny Fest as it's uh, being termed. Uh, you know, there are very few uh, senior researchers uh, here at Park, and very uh, none more valuable, I think, than uh, than Danny. Danny was here before I was here, which is a really long time ago. And uh, I remember when I first came uh, came to Park, my background was in uh, device physics in the semiconductor industry, and uh, very linear process oriented sort of sort of uh, individual and. And my first exposure to, to Danny and Mark Steffick uh, in, in the pursuit of knowledge, I thought was a, a very presumptuous and audacious uh, notion for, for researchers to hold. But, uh, but lo and behold, as I became more and more familiar with uh, the work that uh, Danny's been involved with here, uh, I've just become a complete uh, convert to the notion of uh, the value of uh, socio-technical undertakings and the importance that they, they hold, not just in research, but in, uh, in society at large. Um, you know, one of the things that, you know, there's the, the doing and the being of a, of a senior researcher that are, are very important in uh, the park community and culture. Um, you know, Danny obviously over his years has been able to, to show researchers how to, uh, how to make connections, how to lead and champion and when you get really good, you get everyone else to do the work for you, which I notice is a, is a I think will be a somewhat recurring theme today um, as, as more people have, have things to say. But also the being of a researcher, the notion of being able to hold a vision and cast a purpose from that is something that really needs to be modeled by researchers in order to be understood by, uh, by those, those new kids that come out of school. And, uh, and Danny has done a marvelous job of that. Um, and we expect uh, many more contributions of that nature, Danny. Um, I'm gonna hold you to that. Um, the, the noise you hear off to stage right here is the, the official master of ceremonies, uh, Johan de Clear. So with that, I'm gonna turn things over to Johan. Thank, Thank you, Mark. So I'm delighted that we all are here and we can uh, celebrate Danny's accomplishments over the years. Uh, it should be a lot of fun. Now the first question that I actually get asked by people is, what the heck is a festschrift? Um, so I, I looked it up with a, uh, on, on Wikipedia and it says, is a book honoring a respected academic presented during their lifetime, the term borrowed from German. Um, well, this is not a book. Um, and a festschrift contains original contributions by the so honored academics, close colleagues, often their former students, though Danny doesn't have very many students, but lots and lots of colleagues. It is typically published on the occasion of the honorary's retirement, 60, 65th, 70th, not retiring. This is Danny's 60th birthday. <laughs> Again, yeah. And um, it's, writing a book is large, is a lot of work, so. It, what we're doing more is ha we're, we'll have a recording of these proceedings and that will be the shrift. Um, this is sort of the, the outline, uh, so you know what's coming. Um, introductions, I'll do that for the next few minutes and then Don will talk on how does he always manage to make us do the work, you already heard that, it's gonna happen. Pat Hayes will following the leader and then Mark Steffick, uh, what does DGD stand for? That's for, that's Danny's initials apparently. Uh, some thoughts on Danny from David Israel, who, hasn't, who, can't, who, who will be there, in, in, isn't here yet, but will arrive momentarily. Ken Forbes will talk about a uh, student, which was Danny's PhD thesis. And then we're gonna hear about getting natural language NLP to market quickly, a 30 year story, it's an oxymoron. So, you know, I've been to other fest trips and what people do is they do sort of like work through Danny's career um, year by year, and I, uh, this is sort of not what I was gonna do. So I, I, I'm gonna give you a little sort of an uh, other way of looking at Danny's career. The thing that I most, when you look at Danny's CV, the thing you first notice is that he has contributions all over the place. Um, he helped, I'll talk about that in a second, he helped operating systems with 10X, he was lab manager for that, he worked on Logo to Interlist to Smalltalk to Vulkan, 
He worked on uh, system architectures, garbage collection, stacks. He worked on uh, dialogue systems, knowledge representations like KRL, his thesis, and later on he did some more work on algebraic manipulation, natural language understanding from student his thesis, and linkage this is the power set today. So that spans his whole career. Cognitive science, he worked with Don on memory schemata. Qualitative reasoning he did with me. Um, he worked on social technical systems, Eureka, uh, which is um, a, a tool for knowledge sharing tool for Xerox technicians. He worked on education, Logo, Logo, and to the virtual spaces like Haiti. And he actually worked, he worked on diagnosis as well. And then Dan, he has this other thread that you'll see too, is enormous service to the community, AAAI, to the AI journal and cognitive science. So this is the boring part of his CV, but I'll just show it. He got his, I didn't put the date when he got it. <laughs> it's got his PhD, Marvin, uh, no, he first got his BS from RPI. I, I, that's, that was not a good choice. And then there was a master's, <laughs> which was this little liberal arts college up the, the Charles. And then he got his, P he finally did the correct choice and he went to MIT. <laughs> and his, his thesis was a, uh, something that took algebraic, algebra word problems you get in high school and automatically solve them. Um, it's uh, something that was an inspiration to me and actually an inspiration to many people as it sort of opened the floodgates about what could be done by computers. I don't know how you managed to get anything done back then because computers are basically not even computers. There's more computers in my watch than the computer you used. Uh, honors, I'll just, these are the honors that hit me. Um, he uh, was involved with the AI journal, which is the flagship um, journal of the field. He was involved in it from 75 to 2001, 26 years. So he had enormous impact on the field. Um, uh, it, was, it was sort of fun being in his office next to him because it's amazing how many people send little papers in about how they now know how to do a teleportation and, you know, they got intelligence solved and then he would post them on his wall, you know, because uh, as people things, people send to the AI journal, like a third of them back then were just complete looney tunes. He was president of AAAI for a couple of years. Less known, he was also chair of the Cognitive Science Society that speaks to, Diane, uh, to Danny's uh, cognitive science interest. He's got the AAAI and Ichikai Distinguished Service Awards. He's a AAAI fellow, an ACM fellow, and he got the ACM Software Award for Analyst. He has 13 books, 112 papers, sorry for this, and 27 patents. Now, what I want to talk about a little bit more is the stuff you don't see in his CV. So I interviewed Danny a little bit earlier on and I extract some tidbits from him what are not in his CV. So what I learned is he went to the Bronx High School of Science where also Marvin Minsky went and many other people, some other people, anybody here from the br other people from? Uh, yes. You, Bert? Okay, you were with him, okay. We went together. Went together. So Danny is always a little bit, you know, is willing to step out. So uh, he was going to do this build this thing that simplified Boolean functions of four variables. So Danny's not shy. He just sent the letter to Claude Shannon. He said Bell Labs. Um, so he went to Bell Labs and, and, and Claude, I guess, talked to him. And then Claude said, go to Ed Berkeley. And then he went to Ed Berkeley at New York who had relays available. And there were these two high school kids also working, building something. They were building this mouse. And their names were Bert and Ivan Sutherland, um, which many of us know. Bert Sutherland was a lab manager at Park. He's the person who hired me in 1979. And um, what was interesting, he did build this simplifier. I don't think he won the science competition, but he got some honorable mention. And, Ma and Martin Goddard then interviewed him later on, and it was written up in one of Martin's books. So that's cool. I didn't, I didn't know this. So there goes, there's, there's two other funny stories. So I, mean, I get this a little bit reverse order, but then Danny, I, for some reason I don't understand, he wrote two books or two small pamphlets on algebra and calculus. Remember Skinner had this idea of operant conditioning and uh, so Danny wrote a book which is a program instruction. The idea is you ask a, qu a question and you get an answer, question, answer. Um, and uh, this is a proof that Danny actually wrote a book on basic algebra. See, Danny Barbara. I don't know why he did it. Pardon? <laughs> yeah, that was, but it's not my fault. <laughs> Oh, okay. So the soup stands for cash, right? <laughs> <laughs> that, that was probably money. I was 
was proof reading for that stuff. Oh, you were really proof reading? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I went down to visit him. I got hired as a proof reader. Oh. <laughs> so he was at M So Danny has really had only two real jobs in his life. Um, forget about the summer jobs. And he first worked at BBN for seven years, and he was hired there by Jerry, uh, by JCR Licklider, Lick as we call him, who later on had made enormous contributions to the creation of DARPA, and Jerry Elkind, and Jer Jerry Elkind was, right, the first manager of Park Field Cell Labs. And he was there with Seymour Papert and Wally Fursig, and that's what they did, invented logo, and he said he programmed the first li logo in LISP, that explains why logo has these listy things in it, I never knew that. He taught the first logo class with Seymour, and there was this crazy kid um, who had written a baby lisp by the name of Peter Deutsch. It's like he's a 14-year-old. And that inspired Danny. I think Peter is sitting over there. Yeah, right. Uh, I hope I'm telling a true story. And that motivated Danny to do BBN lisp. And then BBN purchased the first PDP-1. And over these times, BBN got the lisp got developed more and became interlisp. And, and, and uh, anyway, you know that story. So Danny actually became a vice president at BBN, I don't know if you know that. And so he was actually sort of a lab manager. It's sort of hard to believe Danny being a lab manager, I don't quite relate. <laughs> but, but they developed a 10X, which was a very uh, innovative operating system for the PDP series of machines. What else I got here? Okay, um, that's the agenda. Um,